first book of Samuel. Chapter 1, verse 1. Now there was a certain man of Ramat Emozim, of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Toho, the son of Phob, and Ephrahite. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Peniah. And Peniah had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Silo. And the two sons of Eli, Hopni and Peniah, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Peniah his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But to Hannah, unto Hannah, he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore, for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, went, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Silo, and after they had drunk. But eat now, now, now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of the of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look upon the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaid, but wilt give unto thine handmaid a man child. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Anna answered and said, My Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink but I've poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hereto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. 
And they rose up in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel saying because I have asked him of the Lord. And the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Anna went not up, for she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child is weaned, and then I will bring him, that he may appear before the Lord. And there abide forever. And Elkanah, her husband, said unto her, Do what seemeth thee good. Tarry unto thou have weaned him. Only, only the Lord establish his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she had weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, with three bullocks and one ephah of flour and a bottle of wine, and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Silo. And the child was young. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh my Lord, as thou, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord had given me my petition which I ask of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 1. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord, my horn. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies, because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, and there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogance come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, 
and they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry seized, so that the barren hath borne seven, and she that had many children is waxed feeble. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bring it down to the grave and bring it up. The Lord make it poor and make it rich. He bring it low and lift it up. He raise it up the poor out of the dust and lift it up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he had set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For, the, for by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto king, and exalt the horn of his anointed. And Elkanah went to Ramah to his house, and the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was in seething with a, fr a flesh hook of three teeth in his hands. And he struck it into the pan, or kettle, or cauldron, or pot. All that the flesh brought up, the priest took for himself. So they did in silo unto all the Israelites that came thither. So they did. Also, before they burnt the fat, the priest's servant came and said to the woman that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. And if the man said unto him, Let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desireth, then he would answer him, Nay, but thou shalt give it me now. And if not, I will take it by force. Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. For men abhorred the offering of the Lord. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child, and girded with a linen ephod. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to the Lord. And they went unto their own home. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Now Eli was very old and heard that his sons did unto all Israel and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, why do ye such things? 
for I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. He make the Lord's people to transgress. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. And there came a man of God named Eli and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon mine altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Wherefore kick ye all my sacrifice and my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honorest thy sons above me, to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of the offerings of Israel, my people. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father shall walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, be it far from me, for them that honor me I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days came that I will cut off thine arm, and the arm of thy father's house, that there shall not be an old man in thine house. And thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation, in all the wealth which God shall give Israel. And there shall not be an old man in thine, in thine house forever. And the man of thine, whom I shall not cut off from mine altar, shall be to consume thine eyes, and to grieve thine heart. And all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of their age. And this shall be a sign unto thee that shall come upon thy two sons, and Hopni and Penias. In one day they shall die, both of them. And I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before man anointed forever. And I shall come, and it shall come to pass, that every one that is left in thine house shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread, and shall say, Put me, I pray thee, into one of the priest's office, that I may eat a piece of bread. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 1 And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass that at that time, when Eli was laid down in his place, that his eyes began to wax dim, and he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. 
that the Lord oh that the Lord called Samuel and he answered here am I and he ran unto Eli and said here I am for thou callest me and I and he said I called not lie down again and he went and lay down And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I call not my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou this call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, Thy servant hear it. For Samuel went, so Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant hear it. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will bring you, I will do a thing in Israel that will both the ears of everyone that hear it, it shall tingle. That which both the ears of everyone that hear it, it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he know it, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. And Samuel lay until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord and Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son? And he answered, Here am I. And he said, what is the thing that the Lord had said unto thee? I pray thee, hide not it from me. God do so to thee, and more also, if thou hide anything from anything from me of all the things that he said unto thee. If thou hide. And Samuel told him every whit. And hid, and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan, even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Silo, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Silo by the word of the Lord. First Samuel 4, chapter 1 And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and pitched beside Ebenezer, and the Philistines pitched in Apec. 
and the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines, and they slew of the army in the field about 4,000 men. And when the people were coming to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore had the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Silo unto us, that when it cometh among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. So the people went into Silo, that they might bring from thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth between the cherubims and the two sons of Eli, Hopni and Penias were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. And when the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they understood that the ark of the Lord was come into the camp. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is come into the camp. And they said, Woe unto us, for there had not been such a thing heretofore. Woe unto us, who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty God? These are the gods that smoke the Egyptians with all the plague in the wilderness. Be strong and quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines, that ye be not servants unto the Hebrews as they have been to you. Quit yourselves like men and fight. And the Philistines fought and Israel was smitten and they fled every man into his tent. And there was a very great slaughter, for there fell of Israel thirty thousand footmen. And the ark of God was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Upni and Penias, were slain. And there ran, ran a man of Benjamin out of the army, and came to Silo the same day with his clothes rent and with earth upon his head. And when he came, lo, Eli sat upon a seat by the wayside watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. And when Eli heard the noise of the crying, he said, What meaneth the noise of this tumult? And the Lord came in hastily, and the man came in hastily, and told Eli. Now Eli was ninety and eight years old, and his eyes were dim, and he could not see. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled today out of the army. And he said, What? Is there done, my son? And the messenger answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistine. And there had been also a great slaughter among the people. And thy two sons also, Upni and Penias, are dead. And the ark of God is taken. And it came to pass when he had, when he made mention of the ark of God, that he fell from off the seat backwards by the side of the gate, and his neck break, and he died, for he was an old man and heavy, and he had judged Israel forty years. And his daughter-in-law, Penias' wife, was with child near to her to be delivered, and when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was taken, and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, 
she bowed herself and travailed, for her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the woman that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast borne a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. And she named the child Ishabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel, because the ark of God was taken, and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, The glory is departed from Israel, for the ark of God is taken. First Samuel 5, chapter 1. Am I saying it wrong? Yes. Yes. <laughs> First Samuel chapter 5 verse 1 and the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer unto Ashdod when the Philistines took the ark of God they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon and when they of Ashdod arose early in the morning behold Dagon was fallen upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord and they took Dagon and set him in his place again and when they rose early on the morrow morning behold Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord and the head of Dagon was both and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold. Only the stump of Dagon was left to him. Therefore neither the priest of Dagon, nor any that came into Dagon's house, thread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod unto this day. But the hand of the Lord was heavy upon them of Ashdod, and he destroyed them and smote them with emeralds, even Ashdod, and the coast thereof. And when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, The ark of God, of the God of Israel, shall not abide with us, for his hand is sore upon us, and upon Dagon our God. They sent therefore, and gathered all the lords of the Philistines unto them, and said, what shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? And they answered, Let the ark of the God of Israel be carried about unto Gath. And they carried the ark of God of Israel about thither. And it was so that, after they had carried it about, the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great destruction. And he smote the men of the city, both small and great, and they had emeralds in their secret parts. Therefore they sent the ark of God to Ekron. And it came to pass, as the ark of God came to Ekron, that the Ekronites cried out, saying, They have brought about the ark of God of Israel to us, to slay us and our people. So they sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistine and said, Send away the ark of God of Israel and let it go again to his own place and, it slay us, and that it slay us not and our people. For there were a deadly destruction throughout all the city. The hand of God was very heavy there. And the men that died not were smitten with the emeralds and the cry of the city went up to heaven first samuel chapter 6 verse 1 and the ark of the lord was in the country of the philistines seven months and the philistines called for the priest and the diviners saying 
What shall we do to the ark of the Lord? Tell us wherewith we shall send it to his place. And they said, If ye send away the ark of the God of Israel, send it not empty, but in any wise return him a trespass offering. Then ye shall be healed, and it shall be known to you why his hand is not removed from you. Then they said, What shall be the trespass offering which we shall return to him? They, they answered, Five golden emeralds and five golden mice, according to the number of the lords of the Philistines. For one plague was on you and on your lords. Wherefore ye shall make images of your emeralds, and the images of your mice that mar the land and he shall give glory unto the God of Israel peradventure he will lighten his hand from off you and from off your gods and from off your land wherefore then do ye harden your hearts as the Egyptians and Pharaoh hardened their hearts when he had wrought wrongfully among them did they not let the people go and they departed Now therefore, make a new cart, and take your milch kine, on which there had come no yoke, and tie the kine of the cart, and bring their calves home from them. And they take the ark of the Lord, and lay it upon the cart, and put the jewels of gold, which he return him for a trespass offering in a coffer by the side thereof, and sent it away, that it may go, and take the same thing, okay, and see if it go it up by the way of his own coast, to Beth Shemesh, then he had done us this great evil, but if not, then he shall know that it is not his hand that smote us, it was a chance that happened to us. And the men did so, and took two milch kine, and tied them to the cart, and shut up their cows at home. And they lay the ark of the Lord upon the cart, and the coffer with the mice of gold, and the images of their emeralds. And the kine took the straight way, the way of Beth Shemesh and went along the highway, lowing as they went, and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. And the lords of the Philistines went after them unto the border of Beth Shemesh. And they of Beth Shemesh were reaping their wheat harvest in the valley. And they lifted up their eyes and saw the ark and rejoiced to see it. And the cart came into the field of Joshua, a Bethshemite, and stood there, where there was a great stone. And they clave the wood of the cart, and offered the kind of burnt offering unto the Lord. And the Levites took down the ark of the Lord, and the coffer that was with it, wherein the jewels of gold were, and put them on the great stone. And the men of Beth Shemesh offered burnt offerings and sacrificed sacrifices the same day unto the Lord. And when the five lords of the Philistines had seen it, they returned to Ekron the same day. And these are the golden emeralds which the Philistines returned for a trespass offering unto the Lord. For Ashdod won. For Gaza, one. For Achelon, one. For Gath, one. For Ekron, one. And the golden mice, according to the number of the cities of the Philistines, belonging to the five lords, both of fen cities and of country villages, even unto the great stone of Abel, whereon they set down the ark of the Lord, which stone remained unto this day in the field of Joshua, 
the Bethshemite. And he smote the men of Bethshemish because they had looked into the ark of the con of the Lord. Even he smote the people fifty thousand and threescore and ten men. And the people lamented because the Lord had smitten men of the people with a great slaughter. And the men of Bethshemish said, Who is able to stand before this holy Lord God? And to whom shall he go up from us? And they sent messengers to the inhabitants of Kerjacharim, saying, The Philistines have brought again the rock of the Lord. Come ye down and fetch it up for you. To you. First Samuel chapter seven verse one and the the men of Kirk Jim came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill and sanctified Elysia his son to keep the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, while the ark abode in Kerjacharim, that the time was long, and it was twenty years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your heart, then put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth, from among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines then the children of Israel said put away Balaam and Ashtaroth and serve the Lord only and Samuel said gather all Israel to Mizpah and I will pray for you unto the Lord and they gathered together to Mizpah, and drew water, and poured it out before the Lord, and fasted on that day, and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Mizpah, of Israel, in Mizpah. And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them, and they were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came under Bechkar. And Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, It here too, and the Lord helped us. So the Philistines were subdued, and they came no more into the coast of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. And the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel from Ekron even unto Gath, and the coast thereof did Israel deliver out of the hand of the Philistines, and there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life, and he went from year to year in circuit to Bethel and Gilgal and Mizpah, 
and judge Israel in all those places. And he went, and his return was to Ramah, for there was his house, and there he judged Israel, and there he built an altar unto the Lord. First Samuel chapter 8 verse 1 And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel and the name of his second Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways but turned aside after lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons, would, sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing despised Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, and I shall not reign over them. according to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, albeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen, and some shall run before his chariots. And he shall appoint him captains over thousands, and captains over fifties, and will set them to ear his ground, and to reap his harvest, and to make his instruments of war, and instruments of his chariots. And he will take your daughters and be conf to be confectionaries, and to be cooks, and to be bakers. And he will take your field and your vineyards, and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take the tent of your seed and of your vineyards, and give to his officers and to his servants. And he will take your main men servants, and your maid servants, and your goodliest young men, and your asses, and put them to work. He will take the tent of your sheep, and he shall be his servants. And he shall cry out in that day because of your king, which ye shall have chosen you. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, that we, will, that we also may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us, and go out before us, and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. First Samuel chapter 9 verse 1 
Now there was a man of Benjamin, whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Betcheroth, the son of Apiah, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man, and a goodly, and there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upwards, he was higher than any of the people. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with thee, and arise, go seek the asses. And he passed through Mount Ephraim, and passed through the land of Salisha, but they found them not. And they passed through the land of Shalim, and there they were not. And they passed through the land of the Benjamites, but they found them not. And when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servants that was with him, Come, and let us return, lest my father leave caring for the asses, and take thought of us. And he said unto them, Behold, now there is this city a man of God, and he is an honorable man. All that he had said cometh through surely to pass. Now let us go thither, peradventure he can show us what show us our way that we should go. Then said Saul to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread is spent in our vessels, and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? And the servant answered Saul again and said, Behold, I have here a hand of fourth part of a shekel of silver. That will I give to the man of God to tell us our way. Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he speak, Come and let us go to, to Seir. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. Then said Saul to his servant, Well said, come let us go. So they went into the city where the man of God was. And they answered him. And as they went up the hill to the city, they found young maidens going out to draw water, and said unto them, Is the seer here? And they answered them, and said, He is. Behold, he is before you. Make haste now, for he came today to the city. For there is a sacrifice of the people today in the high place. As soon as he come into the city, he shall straightway find him, before he go up to the high place to eat. For the people will not eat until he come, because he that blessed the sacrifice, and afterwards they eat that be bidden. Now therefore, get you up, for about this time he shall find them, find him. And they went up into the city, and when they were come into the city, behold, Samuel came up against them for to go up to the high place. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow about this time I will send three men out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel, and he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines, for I have looked upon my people because their cry is come upon me. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold the man whom I spoke of to thee, spoke of, Sorry. And when Samuel saw Saul, 
the Lord said unto him, Behold, the man whom I spake to thee of, this same shall reign over my people. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where is the seer's house? And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place, for ye shall eat with me today, and tomorrow I will let thee go, and will tell thee all that I have in mine heart, in thine heart. And as for thine ass, that were lost three days ago, set not thy mind on them, for they are found, and on whom is all the desire of Israel? Is it not on thee and on all thy father's house? And Saul answered and said, I am not I a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel, and my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Wherefore ten, then speakest thou so to me? And Samuel took Saul and his servant, and brought them into the parlour, and made them sit in the chiefest place among them that were bidden, which were about thirty persons. And Samuel said unto the cook, Bring the portion which I gave thee, for which I said unto thee, Sit it by thee. And the cook took up the shoulder, and that which was upon it, and set it before Saul. And Samuel said, Behold, that which I left, set it before thee, and eat, for unto this time hath I been kept for thee, since I said, I have invited the people. So Saul did eat with Samuel that day. And when they came, they were come down from the high place into the city. Samuel communed with Saul upon the top of the house. And they arose early, and it came to pass about the spring of the day that Samuel called Saul to the top of the house, saying, Up, that I may send thee away. And, so, and Saul arose, and they went out, both of them, he and Samuel, abroad. And as they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Bid the servant pass on before us. And he passed on, But stand thou still a while, that I may show thee the work, the word of God. First Samuel chapter 10 verse 1 Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said Is it not because the Lord had anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? When thou art departed from me today then thou shalt find two men by Rachel sepulchre in the border of Benjamin at Zelpha. And they will say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek are found. And lo, thy father had left the care of the asses, and saw it for you, saying, hmm. What shall I do for my sons? Then shalt thou go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there shall meet thee three men going up to God to Bethel one carrying three kids and another carrying three loaves of bread and another carrying a bottle of wine and they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread which thou shalt receive of their hands after that thou shalt come into the hill of god where is the garrison of the philistines and it shall come to pass when thou art come thither to the city that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psalm and a tabret and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon them, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. 
And let it be when these signs are come upon unto thee, that thou do as occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met them. And the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. And it came to pass when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said one to another, What is this that is come unto the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? And one of the same place answered and said, But who is their father? Therefore it become a proverb. proverb is Saul also among the prophets? Oh. And when he had made an end of prophesying, he came to the high place. And Saul's his uncle said unto him and to his servants, Whither went ye? And he said, To seek the asses. And when we saw that they were no more, nowhere, we came to Samuel. And Saul's uncle said, Tell me, I pray thee, what Samuel said unto you. And Saul said unto his uncle, He told us plainly that the asses were found, but as but of the matter of the kingdom whereof Samuel spake, he told him not. And Samuel called the people together unto Mispah, unto the Lord to Mispah. And said unto the children of Israel, Thus said the Lord of God of Israel, I brought you up out of Egypt, and delivered you out of the land of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all the kingdoms, and of them that oppressed you. And ye have this day rejected your God, who himself saved you out of all of your adversities and your tribulations. And he have said unto him, Nay, but set a king over us. Now therefore preserve us, present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your thousands. And when Samuel had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near, the tribute of Benjamin was taken. The tribes of Benjamin was taken. When he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by their families, the family of Matri was taken, and Saul the son of Kish was taken, and when they sought him, he could not be found. Therefore they inquired of the Lord further, if the man should yet come thither. And the Lord answered, Behold, he had hid himself among the stuff. And they ran and fetched him thence. And when he stood among the people, he was higher than any of the people from his shoulders and upward. And Samuel said to all the people, See ye him whom the Lord had chosen, that there is none like him among all the people. Huh. There is none. And all the people shouted and said, God save the king. Then Samuel told the people the manner of the kingdom and wrote it in a book and laid it up before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. And Saul also went home to Gibra and there went with him a band of men whose hearts God had touched. But the children of Belial said, How shall this man save us? And they despised him, 
and brought him no presents, but he held his peace. First Samuel chapter 11 verse 1. Then Naash the Ammon, Ammonite came up and encamped against Dabishile. Let me start again. Then Naash the Ammonite came up and encamped against Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us, and we will serve thee. And Nahash the Ammonite answered them, On this condition we will make a covenant with you, that I may trust out all your right eyes, and lay it for a reproach upon Israel. And the elders of Jabez said unto him, Give us seven days respite, that we may send messengers unto all the coasts of Israel. And then, if there be no man to save us, we will come out to thee. Then came the messengers of Gilbe to Saul, and told the tidings in the ears of the people. And all the people lifted up their voices and wept. And behold, Saul came after the herd out of the field, and Saul said, What haileth the people that they weep? And they told him the tidings of the men of Jabesh. And the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard those tidings, and his anger was kindled greatly. And he took a yoke of oxen and hewed them in pieces, and sent them throughout all the coasts of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and after Samuel, so shall it be done unto his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people, and they came out with one consent. And when he numbered them in Bezek, the children of Israel were three hundred thousand, and the men of Judah 30,000. And they said unto the messengers that came, Thus shall we say unto the men of Jabel, Jabel Gilead, Tomorrow by this time the sun be hot, ye shall have help. And the messengers came and showed it to the men of Jabesh, and they were glad. Therefore the men of Jabesh said, Tomorrow we will come out unto you. And he shall do with us all that seemeth good unto you. And it was so on the morrow that Saul put the people in three companies. And they came into the midst of the host in the morning watch. And slew the Amorites under the heat of the day. And it came to pass that they which remained were scattered. So that two of them were not left together. And the people said unto Samuel, Who is he that sold, that said, Shall Saul reign over us? Bring the men that we may put them to death. And Saul said, There shall not a man be put to death this day, for today the Lord hath wrought salvation in Israel. Then said Samuel to the people, Come, and let us go to Gilgal and renew the kingdom there. And all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. And there they sacrificed sacrifices of peace offerings before the Lord. And there Saul and all the men of Israel rejoiced greatly. First Samuel chapter 12 verse 1. And Samuel said unto all Israel behold, Israel, behold, I have hearkened unto your voice in all that ye said unto me, and have made a king over you. And now, behold, the king walketh before you, and I am old and gray-headed, and behold, my sons are with you, and I have walked before you from my childhood unto this day. 
Behold, here I am. Weakness against me before the Lord and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Or whose ass have I taken? Or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind my eyes therewith? And I will restore it. The, and they said, Thou hast not defrauded us, nor oppressed us, neither hast thou taken oath of any man's hand. And he said unto them, The Lord is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day, that ye have not found aught in my hand. And they answered, He is witness. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron, and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Now therefore stand still, that I may reason with you before the Lord of all the righteous act of the Lord, which he did to you and to your fathers. When Jacob was come into Egypt, and your fathers cried unto the Lord, then the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, which brought forth your fathers out of Egypt, and made them dwell in this place. And when they forgot the Lord their God, he sold them into the hand of Caesarea, captain of the host of Asa, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab, and they fought against them. And they cried unto the Lord and said, We have sinned because we have forsaken the Lord, and have served Balaam and Astaroth. But now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies, and we will serve thee. And the Lord sent Jerubbabel, and Bedan, and Jephthah, and Samuel, and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and ye dwelt safe. And when he saw that Naash, the king of children of Ammon, came against you, he said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us when the Lord your God was your king. Now therefore behold the king whom ye have chosen, and whom ye have desired, and behold, the Lord hath set a king over you. If ye will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall both ye and also the king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord your God. But if he will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandments of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you, as it was against your fathers. Now therefore stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. It is not wheat harvest. Is it not wheat harvest today? I will call unto the Lord, and he will send thunder and rain, and he will that ye may perceive and see that your wickedness is great, which ye have done in the sight of the Lord, in asking you a king. So Samuel called unto the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day, and all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. And all the people said unto Samuel, Pray for thy servants unto the Lord thy God, that we die not. For we, have for we have added unto all our sins this evil to ask us a king. And Samuel said unto the people, Fear not, ye have done all this wickedness. Ye turn not aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. And turn ye not aside from them. Shall ye go after vain things which cannot profit or deliver, for they are vain. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because he had pleased the Lord to make you his people. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in season to pray for you, but I will teach you that the God that you the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he had done for you. But if he shall still do wickedly, he shall be consumed, both you and your king.
1 Samuel 13, verse 1. Saul reigned one year, and when he had reigned two years over Israel, Saul chose him three thousand men of Israel, whereof two thousand were with Saul in Mishmash and in Mount Bethel, and a thousand were with Jonathan in Gilbe of Benjamin, and the rest of the people he sent every man to his tent. And Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines that was in Geba. And the Philistines heard of it. And Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. And all Israel heard say that Saul had smitten a garrison of the Philistines, and that Israel also was had in abomination with the Philistines and the people were called together after Saul to Gilgal and the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen and people as a sand which is on the seashore in multitude and they came up and pitched in Mishmash eastward from Bethaven and when, when the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were distressed, then the people did hide themselves in caves, and in thickets, and in rocks, and in high places, and in pits. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal. And all the people followed him, trembling. And he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offerings. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering behold samuel came and saul went out to meet him and he that he might salute him and samuel said what hast thou done and saul said because i saw that the people were scattered from me and that thou camest not within the days appointed and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmash. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself therefore and offered a burnt offering. Therefore, therefore said I, the Philistines will come down, sorry, And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord had sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord had commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. And Samuel arose and got him up from Gilgal into Gilbe of Benjamin. And Saul numbered the people that were present with him, about six hundred men. And Saul and Jonathan his son and the people that were present with them abode in Gilbe of Benjamin, but the Philistines encamped in Mishmash. And the spoilers came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. One company turned onto the way that leaded to Oprah, onto the land of Shaul. And the other company turned the way of Bethoron. And another company turned to the way of the border of that looked to the valley of 
Seboim, toward the wilderness. Now there was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel. For the Philistines said, Lest the Hebrews make them swords for spears. But all the Israelites went down to the Philistines to shorten every man his share and his coulter and his axe and his mattock. Yet they had a file for the mattocks and for the coulters and for the forks and for the axes and to sharpen the goats. So it came to pass in the day of the battle of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people that were with Saul and Jonathan, but that Saul and with Jonathan his son was there found. And the garrison of the Philistines went out to the passage of Mishmash. First Samuel chapter 14 verse 1 Now it came to pass upon a day that Jonathan the son of Saul said unto the young man that bare his armor, Come and let us go over to the Philistine garrison that is on the other side. But he told not his father. And Saul tarried in the uttermost part of Gibeah on the uh, pomegranate tree which is in Migron. And the people that were with him were about 600 men. And Aniah, the son of Ashiptob, Ichabod's brother, the son of Panias, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Silo, were in an ephod. And the people knew not that Jonathan was gone. And between the passages, by which Jonathan sought to go over to the Philistines' garrison, there was a sharp rock on the one side and a sharp rock on the other side. And the name of the one was Boses, and the name of the other, Sene. The foreground of the one was situate northward over against Mishmash, and the other southward over Gilbey. And Jonathan said to the young man, the young man that bare his armor, Come, and let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by way of my few. And his armor bearer said unto him, Do all that is in thine heart. Turn thee. Behold, I am with thee according to thy heart. Then Jonathan, then said Jonathan, Behold, we will pass over unto these men, and we will discover ourselves unto them. If they say thus unto us, tarry until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and will not go up unto them. But if they say thus, come up unto us, then we will go up. For the Lord had delivered them into our hand, and this shall be a sign unto us. But if they say thus, come up unto us, And both of them discovered themselves unto the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, Behold, the Hebrew come forth out of the holes where they had hid themselves. And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come up to us and we will show you a thing. And Jonathan said unto his armor bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord had delivered them into the hand of, the, of Israel. And Jonathan climbed up upon his hands and upon his feet and his armor bearer after him and they fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer slew 
after him. And that first slaughter, which Jonathan and his armor bearer made, was about 20 men within, as it were, a half acre of land which a yoke of oxen might plow. And there was trembling in the host, in the field, and among all the people, the garrison and the spoilers, they also trembled, and the earth quaked, so it was a very great trembling. And the watchmen of Saul in Gilbe of Benjamin looked, and behold, the multitude melted away, and they went on beating down one another. Then said Saul unto the people that were with him, Number them, I see who is gone, and see who is gone from us. And when they had numbered, behold, Jonathan and his armor bearer were not there. And Saul said unto Aniah, Bring either the ark of God, for the ark of God was at that time with the children of Israel. And it came to pass, while Saul talked unto the priest, that the noise that was in the host of the Philistines went on and increased. And Saul said unto the priest, Withdraw thine hand. And Saul and all the people that were with him assembled themselves. And they came to the battle, and behold, every man's sword was against his fellow, and there was a very great discomfiture. Moreover, the Hebrews that were with the Philistines before that time, which went up with them into the camp from the country round about, even they turned to be with the Israelites that were with Saul and Jonathan. Likewise, all the men of Israel, which had hid themselves in Mount Ephraim, when they heard that the Philistines fled, even they also followed hard after them in the battle. So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle passed over unto Beth Haven. And the men of Israel were distressed that day, for Saul had adjured the people, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any fruit until evening, that I may be avenged on a time on mine enemies. So none of the people tasted any food. And all they of the land came to a wood, and there was honey upon the ground. And when the people were come into the wood, behold, the honey dropped, but no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath. Wherefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand, and dipped it in an honeycomb, and put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes were enlightened. Then answered one of the people and said, Thy father straight to charge the people with an oath, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food this day. And the people were faint. Then said Jonathan, My father had troubled the land. See, I pray you, how mine eyes have been enlightened, because I trusted a little in this honey, I tasted a little of this honey. How much more, if haply the people had eaten freely today of the spoil of their enemies which they found. For had there not been now a much greater slaughter among the Philistines? And they smote the Philistines that day from Mishmash to Ajalon, and the people were very faint. And the people flew upon the spoil, and took sheep and oxen and calves, and slew them on the ground, and the people did eat them with blood. Then they told Saul, saying, Behold, the people sin against the Lord, in that they eat with the blood. 
And he said, Ye have transgressed. Roll a great stone unto me this day. And Saul said, Disperse yourselves among the people, and say unto them, Bring me hither every man an ox, and every man his sheep, and slay them here, and eat, and sin not against the Lord in eating with the blood. And all the people brought every man his ox with him that night, and slew them there. And Saul built an altar unto the Lord, the same was the first altar that he built unto the Lord. And Saul said, Let us go down after the Philistines by night, and spoil them until morning light, and let us not leave a man of them. And they said, Do whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Then said the priest, Let us draw near hither unto God. And Saul asked counsel of God, Shall I go down after the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into the hand of Israel? But he answered him not that day. And Saul said, Draw ye near hither, all the chief of the people, and know and see wherein this sin had been this day. For as the Lord liveth, which saveth Israel, though it be in Jonathan's my son, he shall surely die. But there was not a man among all the people that answered him. Then said he unto all Israel, Be ye on one side, and I and Jonathan my son will be on the other side. And the people said unto Saul, Do what seemeth good unto thee. Therefore Saul said unto the Lord of God of Israel, Give a perfect lot. And Saul and Jonathan were taken, but the people escaped. And Saul said, Cast lots between me and Jonathan, my son. And Jonathan was taken. Then Saul said to Jonathan, Tell me what thou hast done. And Jonathan told him and said, I did not taste a little honey with the end of I did but taste a little honey with the end of the rod that was in mine hand, and lo, I must die. And Saul answered, God do so and more also, for thou shalt surely die, Jonathan. And the people said unto Saul, Shall Jonathan die, who had wrought this great salvation in Israel? God forbid! As the Lord liveth, there shall not one hair of his head fall to the ground, for he had wrought with God this day. So the people rescued Jonathan, that he died not. Then Saul went up from following the Philistines, and the Philistines went to their own place. So Saul took the kingdom over Israel and fought against all his enemies on every side against Moab and against the children of Ammon and against Edom and against the king of Jobah and against the Philistines and whithersoever he turned himself he vexed them and he gathered an host and smote the Amalekites and delivered Israel out of the hands of them that spoiled them now the sons of Saul were Jonathan and Ishoi, Ishoi and Melchizedek and the names of his two daughters were these in names the name of the firstborn was Mirab and the name of the second Michael or Michal and the name of Saul's wife was Ahinom the daughter of Ahimaaz and the name of the captain of the host was Abner, the son of Ner, Saul's uncle. And Kish was the father of Saul, and Ner, the father of Abner, was the son of Abel. Abel, Abel, or Abel, Abel, Abel. 
And Kish was the father of Saul, and Ner the father of Abner. And there was sore war against the Philistines all the days of Saul. And when Saul saw any strong man or any valiant man, he took him unto him. First Samuel chapter 15 verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the Lord, unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus said the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalekit, Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way, when he came up from Egypt. And now go and smite Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. And Saul gathered the people together, and numbered them in Telem, two hundred thousand footmen, and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart, go you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For he showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou comest to Shur, that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag, and the best of the sheep, and of the oxen, and of the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile, and refuse, and refuse, that they destroyed utterly. Then came the, Lord, the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me, and had not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place, and is gone about, and passed on, and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandments of the Lord. And Samuel said, what mean it then, this bleating of the sheep in mine ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spare the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, 
and I will tell thee what the Lord had said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, was thou not made in the, in the head of the tribes of Israel? Was thou not made? Let me read it. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own eyes, in thy own sight, was thou not me the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed? Wherefore, when didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have disobeyed, I have obeyed, yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agog, the king of Amalek, of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took off the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Had the Lord has great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is an in iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I fear the people and obey their voice. Now therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again unto me, that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. And the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and it rent. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and has given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than you and thou. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people and before Israel, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord thy God. So Samuel turned again after Saul, and Saul worshipped the Lord. Then said Samuel, Bring ye hither to me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. And Agag came unto him del delicately. And Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. And Samuel said, As thy sword had made women childless, so shall thy mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed Agag in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. Wow. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house to Gilbe of Saul. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. First Samuel 16 verse 1 
And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, Oh, can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And, uh, and call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves, and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons, and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass, when they were come, that he looked on Elia, Eliab, and said, Surely he, the Lord's anointed, is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his statue, because I have refused him. For the Lord said not a man, as man said, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord had not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are there are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on a harp, and it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well, and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants, and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in plain, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and comely person, the Lord is with him. Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse, and said, Send me thy son which is with thee, sheep. And Jesse took on an ass, laden with bread, and a bottle of wine, and a kid, and sent, David, sent them by David his son unto Saul. And David came to Saul, and stood with him, and he loved him greatly, 
and he became his armor bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he had found favor in, it, in my sight. And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. 1 Samuel 17 verse 1 Now the Philistines gathered together their armies of Tobata and were gathered together at Shokoth, which belonged to Judah and pitched between Sokoth and Azekah and Ephidsidamin in Ephidsidamin Pesidamin. Amen. <laughs> and Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went up a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had an helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his leg, and a target of brass upon his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed six hundred shekels of iron, and one bear in his shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are ye come out of out to set your battle in array? Am I I'm not a Philistine, and he servants to Saul. Choose you a man for whom, choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. And if I prevail against him and kill him, then we shall be our servants. You shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Let me read that again. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Then Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons. And the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab the firstborn, and next unto him was Abinadab, and the third Shammah. And David was the youngest, and the three elders followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep in Bethlehem. And the Philistines drew near morning and evening, and presented himself forty days. Hmm. 
and just as said unto David his son, Take now thy brethren an eba of this parched corn, and these ten loaves, and run to the camp to thy brethren, and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand. And look how they bear all thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistine had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the, camp, the champion, champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistine, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel when they saw the man fled from him and were sore afraid and the men of israel said have ye seen this man that is come up surely to defy israel is he come up and it shall be that the man who killeth him the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in israel and David spake to the men that stood for by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab is Ella's brother, heard when he spake unto the men and Eliab's anger was kindled against David and he said why camest thou down hither and with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle and David said what have I now done? Is this a new cause? Is, is, is there not a cause? And he turned from him towards another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, they, they rehearsed them before Saul. And he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Lo, no man's heart fall because of him. Oh. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art not a Jew. What? What? Jeez, what's wrong? Okay. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him and smote him, and delivered him out of his mouth. 
And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defiled the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put an helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he harmed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. And he took his staff in his hand, and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag which he had, even in a scrip, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came up, came on, and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beast of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistine this day unto the fowls of the air, and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God of Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord save it not the sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will and He will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the armies to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of his sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until thou came to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the, and the wandered of the Philistines 
fell down by the way of Sharamin, even unto Gath and upon Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines, and they spoiled their tents. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor on his tent. And when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said unto Abner, a captain of the host, the captain of the host, Abner, whose son is this, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As thy soul liveth, O king, I cannot tell. And the king said, Enquire thou whose son this stripling is. And as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistines in his hand. And Saul said to him, Who son art thou, thou young man? And David answered, I am the son of thy servant Jesse the Bethlehemite. First Samuel chapter 18 verse 1 And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garment, even to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war and he was accepted in the sight of the people and also in the sight of Saul's servant. And it came to pass as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine that the woman came out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with timbrels, with joy, and with instrument of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul had, king, Saul had slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth, and the saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousand, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can be he have more, more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. And it came to pass on the morrow, that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul and he prophesied in the midst of the house and David played with his hand as at other times and there was a javelin in Saul's hand and Saul cast the javelin for he said I will smite David even to the wall with it and David avoided out of his presence twice and Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from him and made him his captain over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways and the Lord was with him. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David 
because he went out and came in before them. And Saul said to David, Behold, my elder daughter Merab, her will I give thee to wife. Only be thou valiant for her, and fight the Lord's battle. For Saul, for Saul said, Let not mine hand be upon him. But let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. And David said unto Saul, Who am I? And what is my life or my father's family in Israel, that I should be son-in-law to the king? And it came to pass at the time when Merab's Saul's daughter should have been given to David, that she was given unto Adriel the Metalum, the Met to wife. Huh. Let me read that. But it came to pass at the time when Merab Saul's daughter should have been given to David, that she was given unto Adriel, the Mehetolite, to wife. And David's and Mishael Saul's daughter loved David. And they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. And Saul said, I will give him her, that she may be a sneer to him, and that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Wherefore Saul said to David, Thou shalt this day be my son-in-law in the in the one of the twain. And Saul commanded his servant, saying, Commune with David secretly, and say, Behold, the king hath delight in thee, and all his servants love thee. Now therefore be the king's son in law. And Saul's servants spake on spake those words in the ears of David, and David said, Seem it to you a light thing to be a king's son-in-law, seeing that I am a poor man and lightly esteemed? And the servants of Saul told him, saying, On this manner David spake. And Saul said, Thus shall he say to David, The king desireth not any dowry, but an hundred foreskins of the Philistines. To be avenged of kings, the king's enemies. But Saul thought to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. And when his servants told David these words, it pleased David well to be the king's son in law, and the days were not expired. Wherefore David arose and went, he and his men, and slew of the Philistines two hundred men. And David brought their foreskins, and they gave them in full tale to the king, that he might be the king's son-in-law. And Saul gave him Mike Mitchell, his daughter, to wife. And Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David, and that Mishael, Saul's daughter, loved him. And Saul was yet the more afraid of David, and Saul became David's enemy continually. Then the princes of the Philistines went forth, and it came to pass, after they went forth, that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name was much set by. 1 Samuel chapter 19 verse 1 
And Saul spake to Jonathan his son and to all his servants that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee. No, therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. And I will go and stand beside my father in the field where thou art, and I will commune with my father of thee, and what I see that I will tell thee. And Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul his father, and said unto him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he had not sinned against thee, and because his works have been to thee ward very good. For he did put his life in his hand and slew the Philistine, and the Lord wrought a great salvation for Israel. Thou sawest it, and this rejoice, wherefore then thou wilt thou sin against innocent blood to slay David without a cause. And Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan, and Saul sware, as the Lord liveth, he shall not be slain. And Jonathan called David, and Jonathan shrew him all those things. And Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as in times past. And there was a war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines, and slew them with a great slaughter, and they fled with him. And the evil spirit from the Lord came upon Saul as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand, and David played with his hand. And Saul sought to smite David even to the wall with the javelin, but he slipped away out of Saul's presence, and he smote the javelin into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. Saul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him, and to slay him in the morning. And Michelle, David's wife, told him, saying, If thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. So Michelle David, let David down through the, a window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Michelle took an image and laid it in the bed, and put a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster, and covered it with a cloth. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. And Saul sent the messengers again to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed, that I may slay him. And when the messengers were coming, behold, there was an image in the bed with a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster. And Saul said unto Michelle, Why hast thou deceived me so, and sent away mine enemy, that he escaped? And Michelle answered Saul, He said unto me, Let me go, why should I kill thee? So David fled and escaped, and came to Samuel of Ramah, and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went, and dwelt in Naioth. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is in Naioth, in Ramah. And Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the Spirit of the God was upon them. The Spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul. And they also prophesied. And when it was told Saul, he sent other messengers. And they prophesied likewise. And Saul sent messengers again. And the third time, and they prophesied also. And when then went he also to Ramah. And came to a great well that is in Seku. And he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And not, and one said, Behold, 
they be at North Naos in Rama. And he went thither to Naoth in Rama. And the spirit of the God of God was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied until he came to Naoth in Rama. And he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel in like manner. And lay down naked all that day and all that night. Wherefore they say, Is Saul also among the prophets? First Samuel chapter 20 verse 1. And David fled from Naoth in Ramah and came and said before Jonathan, What have I done? What is mine iniquity? And what is my sin before thy father that he seeketh my life? And he said unto him, God forbid thou shalt not die. Behold, my father will do nothing, either great or small, but that he will shew it me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. And David swore moreover and said, Thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in thine eyes. And he said, Let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. Then said Jonathan unto David, Whatsoever thy soul desireth, I will even do it for thee. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is a new moon, and I shall not fail to sit with the king at meat. But let me go, that I may hide myself in the field unto the third day at even. If thy father at all miss me, then say, David earnestly asks, Leave of me that he might run to Bethlehem his city. For there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. If he say thus, it, it is well. Thy servant shall have peace. But if he be very wroth, then be sure that evil is determined in him. Therefore thou shalt deal kindly with thy servant. For thou hast brought thy servant into a covenant of the Lord with thee. Notwithstanding, if there be an in me iniquity, slay me thyself. For why shouldest thou bring me to thy father? And Jonathan said, Far be it from thee. For if I knew certainly that evil were determined in my father to come upon thee, then would not I tell thee? Then said Jonathan to, then said David to Jonathan, Who shall tell me? Or what if thy father answered thee roughly? And Jonathan said unto David, Come, and let us go out into the field. And they went out, both of them, into the field. And Jonathan said unto David, O Lord God of Israel, when I have sounded my father about tomorrow any time or the third day, and behold, if there be good toward David, then I and I send then send out unto thee and show it thee. The Lord do so. And much more to Jonathan, but if it, it please my father to do thee evil, then I will show it thee, and send thee away, that thou mayst go in peace, and the Lord be with thee, as he had been with my father. And thou shalt not only while yet I live, show me the kindness of the Lord, 
that I die not. But also that thou not cut off thy kindness from my house forever. No, not when the Lord hath cut off the enemies of David, even one from the place of the earth, every one from the place of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemy. So, and Jonathan caused David to swear again because he loved him for he loved him as he loved his own soul then Jonathan said to David tomorrow is a new moon and thou shalt be missed because thy seat will be empty and when thou hast stayed thee three days then thou shalt go down quickly and come to the place where thou didst hide thyself when the business was in hand and shall remain by the stone Ezel. And I will shoot the arrows on the side thereof as though I shot at a mark. And behold, I will send a lad saying, Go find out the arrows. If I express to say unto the lad, Behold, the arrows are on this side of thee. Take them, then come out, come thou, for there is peace to thee, and no hurt, as the Lord liveth. But if I say thus unto the young man, Behold, the arrows are beyond thee. Go thy way, for the Lord had sent thee away. And as the touching, and as touching the matter which thou and I have spoken of, behold, the Lord be between thee and me forever. So David hid himself in the field, and when the new moon was come, the king sat him down to eat meat. And the king And the king sat upon his seat as at other times, even on, upon a seat by the wall. And Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that day, for he thought something had befallen him. He is not clean, surely. He is not clean. And it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day of the month, that David's place was empty. And Saul said unto Jonathan his son, Wherefore cometh not the son of Jesse to meet, neither yesterday nor today? And Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem. And he said, let, let me go, I pray thee, for our family had a sacrifice in the city. And my brother, he had commanded me to be there. And now, if I have found favor in thine eyes, let me get go, get away, I pray thee, and see my brethren. Therefore he cometh not unto the king's table. Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan. And he said unto him, Thou son of the perverse, rebellious woman, do not I know that thou hast chosen the son of Jesse to thine own confusion, and unto the confusion of thy mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Jesse liveth upon the ground, thou shalt not be established, nor thy kingdom. Wherefore now send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. And Jonathan answered Saul his father and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? And what has he done? And Saul cast a javelin in at him to smite him. Whereby Jonathan knew that he was determined of his father to slay David. So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger and did no meat the second day of the month 
for he was grieved for David because his father had done him shame. And it came to pass in the morning that Jonathan went out into the field at the time appointed with David and a little lad with him. And he said unto the lad, Run, find out now the arrows which I shoot. And as the lad ran, he shot an arrow beyond, beyond him. And when the lad was come to the place of the arrow which Jonathan had shot, Jonathan cried after the lad and said, Is not the arrow beyond the thee? And Jonathan cried after the lad, Make speed, haste, stay not. And Jonathan's lad gathered up the arrows and come to his master, came to his master. And the lad knew not anything, only Jonathan and David knew the matter. And Jonathan gave his artillery unto his lad and said unto him, Go, carry them to the city. And as soon as the lad was gone, David arose out of the place towards the south and fell on his face to the ground and bowed himself three times. And they kissed one another and wept with one another until David exceeded. And Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for as much as we have sworn both of us in the name of the Lord, saying, the Lord be between me and thee, and between my seed and thy seed forever. And he arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. <laughs>